In this video, we'll talk about a couple more basic file system utilities in this case. We're going to learn to uh, rename a file and we'll learn to open up a basic text editor from the command line. So in the last video, we used the CP command to copy a folder. Uh, we can rename it using the MV command. MV is move, uh, it stands for, it, it has the same functionality as rename. This one can be kind of dangerous because if you're renaming a folder, uh, especially if you're moving it from like one drive to another, you're technically removing the old folder and then creating a new one. So anytime you run the MV command, you wanna make sure you've got solid backups. Um, I've run into problems where I've typed the MV command, something went wrong and I've lost data. So using the MV command can be dangerous. It has uh, the, the property of really deleting what used to be there and creating something new. So um, MV, and in this case, I'm in my desktop folder. We should be in desktop on the left and desktop on the right. If you're not, get it set up. And if you followed along with the last tutorial, we've got a folder called folder one. So I'm an MV folder one and I'll call this folder three. I'd call it folder two right now if I wanted to. And you can see that we've had the effect of renaming that folder. And again, we can do the same thing that we've done with copy and uh, CD with a dot dot slash. If we wanna rename it and we wanna place it in a different location, I could MV folder three and I could go up one, I could go into downloads and I could call it folder three. So I'll go into downloads here and you can see that now I'm in downloads. I went up one and into downloads. Rename folder three, move it to downloads folder three, boom. And uh, you can see that we now have folder three moved into the downloads folder. All right, so let's look at how to use a text editor inside of Linux uh, from the command line. A lot of times uh, you'll be remotely logged into a Linux machine using the command line and you're gonna need a text editor using this interface. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and maximize my shell and I won't use that file browser on the right as a crutch for the rest of this video. Here I am in the desktop folder. You can see I have a file called myfile.txt. If it's not there, no big deal. There are two text editors you can generally rely on, on a, in a Linux distribution. Really, they're the same thing. You can use nano or you can use pico. They're the same thing. They'll open the same program. I'm gonna go ahead and use Pico, but you might wanna use Nano. Nano may be more reliable. It may be there in some situations. But let's Nano my file.txt. Now, once you hit enter, the whole screen's gonna change and you're gonna have a hard time getting back. So here's our Pico file editor. I'm gonna go ahead and just write, this is a sentence. Go ahead and type anything you want in this text editor. We'll be using this in many videos to modify configuration files, create secure settings. Down at the bottom, we have a list of commands that start with this little up caret. That up caret represents the control key. So uh, control W is where is. That's the equivalent of search. If I were to hit control W, for example, I'm gonna do that now, control W, and I were to search for the word sentence and hit enter, it will take my cursor to the word sentence. Now, this is an older program, and you know every other text editor on the face of planet Earth would use control S to save. In this case, Pico, is going to use control O, write out. So in order to save this now, I'm gonna hit control O, 
and it's going to say file name to write. It's going to bring me down here to this little bar. You kind of have to get used to after using control commands to working down here. What do you want to call it? My file dot text. I'm going to, not going to change anything. I'm going to hit enter. And if you have permission to write that file and everything is good, it'll tell you that it wrote one line. Now, there are two different ways we can get out of PyCo. I'm going to show you a trick that can be used that is used all the time to make life easier. A lot of times you're going to modify a configuration file. You're going to want to like restart a service, see how that configuration, did it break the service? Did I make a mistake? Do I need to go in? Did I forget to put a semicolon or a quotation mark? And you don't want to close the file, have to use control W, jump down to line 300, and then make the change, and then close the text editor and see if your change worked. That can be a long process. Linux allows you to background processes like this. And it's a universal key here inside of our bash shell. It'll work with all kinds of different programs. Um, it's control Z as in Zulu. Okay, so I'm going to hit control Z. Go ahead and do that from here. And you can see it dropped me back down to my command line. Now, it tells you that the pico file command has been stopped. Really, it's been paused. That execution thread has been paused in the background, and Linux will be able to return to that thread at a later time if we want it to. So now I can work at the command line to do things like, I can use the cat command, which stands for concatenate. If I want to read a text file from the command line, you can use the command cat. And I'll cat my file.txt. And you can see that my file.txt contains a single sentence called this is a sentence. All right, so I've now done something at the command line. I've checked to see if it actually saved, for example. Now I can go back to the process that I backgrounded by typing FG at the command line, which stands for foreground. So control Z is background. FG is foreground. And now I'm right back where I was. The cursor is even in the same spot. Now, if I'm positive that I want to close the text editor, I've made the changes, everything works. I don't need this text editor anymore. Now we can use control X to exit. I'm going to make a change though. Let's go, this is a sentence and I'll just put the number one here. Now I have an unsaved change here. I'm going to hit control X to exit and it's going to ask me, do you want to save this buffer? Do you want to save the file? You've made a change. It's going to say yes or no. You just have to type Y. What name? My file.txt again. I'm just going to hit enter and now I have exited that process. If I type FG now, it's going to tell me, sorry, there are no jobs backgrounded. When you left the text editor, you did not use control Z. So the ability to use Pico to open up new files, and you can create files from here. If I type LS my file.txt, I could create anything. I could create new file 2.txt and it will create that file. Test one, two, three. Again, I can hit Control O to save. I'm going to hit Control X to exit. If I type LS, you can see Pico has now created that new file. So depending on whether or not the file exists, Pico will do one of two things. It will open a file that's already there, or it will create a brand new file. A lot of times the students are working with configuration files, I have found, They'll type pico, they'll type the file they want to open, and it will open up a blank screen. Usually it's because maybe they didn't use tab or there's some type of a type, typo in the file name, and pico went ahead and created a new blank file with that name. Again, our dot dot slash also works here. I could do pico, and I could say go up one directory, uh, I could go up three directories, I could go into the Etsy directory, and I could open a file called uh, 
let's do SE. I could open a file called Etsy SSH SSH config. So you can open files in other directories and edit them. Again, instead of using that up arrow three times, in this case, it would probably be better to just use an absolute directory and do something like file Etsy SSH SSH config. But the point is, when you use Pico, you don't have to be in the directory where you want the file to be. You can edit files all over the system from wherever you are. Again, there's a file that already exists on the system that we could then go in and modify. In this case, it is unwritable because we're not the administrator. We'd have to preface that command with sudo. So if I really wanted to edit SSH config, I could do a sudo pico etsy ssh ssh config. It's going to prompt me for my administrative password. And now it's open to file somewhere else on the system with administrative privileges. So I can go in and make changes to this file. The reason why I chose ssh underscore config is because it's a common file and I'll do a lesson on it later. Okay, so inside a desktop, we should have my file and new file two dot text. Uh, make sure you've got those two files. You've created a new file with Pico. You've edited a new file for Pico. If you've got a teacher that's grading, since this is the last video in this basic series, I'm going to have you do two things. Type ls in desktop. You should see two files. Cat my file dot text. And you should have, this is a sentence at the very least that prints after typing cat. And I'll have a note for any teachers out there that you can walk around and you can kind of look for this on student screens in order to take a grade. Okay, thank you.